Okay, hey guys. Today I'm going to show you how to create a 3D model of the bookshelf that we drew pencil and paper in class a few weeks ago. So what you're going to do is you're going to go onto your um, your desktop and you can either type in rhinoceros, but you're going to look for this one here, rhinoceros 5 64 bit. Okay. Um, you're going to double click on this and open up that version of Rhinoceros. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go to open and you're going to open up a template file in your student share folder. Okay, I, I don't have access to it because I'm making this video from home, so it's it's on the school's network, but it, it will call it would be called uh, blank project setup in our production systems folder. If you can't find it, you can also just change the settings of, of this project here. So you would go to Tools, Options, and the first thing you need to do is click on Units. The default units are going to be in millimeters. You're going to change yours to inches. Okay. I would also recommend that you uh, stay in decimals. It's a little bit easier to type the decimals than it is to type the fractions, in my opinion. Okay, and then you're going to hit OK. And then you're going to go back and go to Tools, Options, and you're going to click on Grid over here. And these are the numbers you're going to enter. The grid line count stands for how many lines total there are in the grid. So I'm doing 96 inches for 8 feet, okay? Um, the minor grid lines are going to be at every 1 inch. So these light gray grid lines are going to be at every 1 inch. These dark gray grid lines will be at every 12 minor grid lines. So that when I look at this, every dark gray grid line will be 12 inches, 1 foot two foot, three foot, four foot. Okay, and then all three of these checks are shown and you're going to also make sure that your snap spacing is set at 0.125 which is half of 0.25 and this is the decimal equivalent of an eighth of an inch. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit OK and you should see your project looks like this. So we have a front view, top view, right side view, and 3D perspective. I can pan in the front by right clicking and holding down. I can pan in the top. I can pan in the right. And then when I right click and hold down on my mouse, I rotate. If I want to pan in the perspective, I hold down shift on the keyboard and then right click and hold down. And that allows me to pan. By the way, pan is when you move the camera from one side to another, it's not rotate. It would be like if you were walking with the camera, holding it in one spot, you would kind of just pan the image. Okay, so what we're going to do is now save this file. So I'm just using an old template from last year, but you're going to go to a file, save as, and you're going to make sure that you put it into a production systems folder. <clears throat> and a project folder. So to make a new folder, you can click on this. This, this will, uh, if I click on this, new folder, okay, and I can say uh, production systems or bookshelf, okay. I would make a class folder first. See, I have, a, I have a class folder here, and then I have a project folder, and these are all the different bookshelf drawings I've done. Okay, so you would, you would create a, a class folder and then a project folder so your class folders production systems your project folder would be bookshelf and then you would um, I'm gonna just uh, delete this here otherwise delete me if I'm not gonna use it I already have a project folder and I'm gonna call this bookshelf drawing uh, lesson okay so then I'll hit save and it'll say up here in the command line, file successfully written, and it's saving to my cloud drive, my class folder, my project folder, 
and then here's the file name and then you'll see that the file name is also up here that's the confirm all right so this is the save button right here or you could do file save okay so let's start modeling so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to when you are, are starting a command we're going to start with the polyline tool right over here if you leave your mouse over the tools they will uh, it will tell you what they are so if I start with a polyline tool the command line says where's the start of the polyline I'm gonna go into my front view I'm gonna to try to get to zero right over here the origin these are my coordinates right over here X Y and 3 dz okay I can't get to zero you can see I'm missing it by th a thousandth of an inch so what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn on your grid snap and what that allows is for you to snap to every eighth of an inch. That's a quarter, that's three eighths, there's a half, five eighths, three quarters. I'm just reading these numbers right down here. Okay? And then seven eighths, and then another inch. Okay? I also want you to take off Smart Track. We're not going to use that too often. And you're going to turn on Ortho and O Snap, which stands for object snaps. Now I'm going to just show you what ortho does. If I were to click here I can make a line and I risk making it crooked. Okay? If I want to undo that, I meant to not click there, I could just click the back button here for undo or I could click on the word undo. And it just undoes that last point. With ortho on, I can only make straight lines at 90 degrees. So I'm going to pan and zoom in and out, and I'm actually going to double click on front to maximize my front view here so I can really see what I'm doing. So I want to draw the bottom piece of plywood right here. So that bottom piece of plywood was 14 inches long. So right up here, it's asking me, what's the next point of the polyline? Well, I want to make this 14 inches, so 1, 4, and I hit enter. Where am I typing? I'm just typing right up in here. You don't have to click in there. Okay, it, it, no, it's waiting for you to type something. So I'm just going to hit enter. Okay, and so now what happened is I have, you can see a black 14 inch long line and this white line that's extending here, that's just the, the direction. That's just showing me what direction the line's going to lay down on. So I'm just going to click right here. Okay, and if you get that little window, you could just try to click on it and turn the X off. Okay, and then here, I'm going to, we said the, plot, the wood is all three quarter inches thick. So I could just actually count up and look at these numbers down here until I get up to 0.75, okay, which I am. Or you could just type in 0.75, enter, okay? And then now I have, I have a three quarter inch or 0.75 line ready to go. So I just click right here and a pan and then bring it back and zoom in, get it right there. And then when you get back to here, it'll say point. Okay, so I just made my uh, my bottom piece, okay, and so now I want to make my top piece. So I'm go I, we said that the bookshelf was 17 inches tall. Okay, now I could just draw all of that again at 17 inches, okay, but what I'm going going to do is copy this. So right over here is the copy command. You can also type in copy up here, but this is the copy command. One white square gets co copied into all these blue squares. So I click on it. Okay. Nothing is nothing was selected. By the way, I'm just going to hit escape to get out of this command. If I click on an object, it turns yellow. That's the selection color. Okay. If I want to unselect it, I'm just going to either hit escape or click in empty gray, anywhere in empty gray. So I want to copy this so I can copy it up to over here. So copy. So it says select objects to copy. Okay, I want to copy this. Now it says press enter when done. I'm done selecting the object, so I'm going to hit enter. Now it says where do you want to copy it from? What points do you want to copy it from? I actually want to copy it from the very tippy top right here, right there. Okay. And so it says now it says where do you want to copy it to? Well, I'd like to copy it. Seven, so that the top of this piece is at 17 inches. How do I know where that is? I'm going to 
look at the coordinates here. So right now, this is 12 inches. My y-axis is at 12. Okay, I'm looking at this one, the y-axis. And then here, we're going to get right up to, I'm going to zoom in, right there, 17 inches. I'm going to click. Now it's saying, do you want to copy any more? I'm going to say no. So I'm just going to hit enter. So I have now a bottom piece and a top piece, and the overall height so far is 17 inches. Okay. Now we could have done it the same way and created a rectangle around here, but that would have created like a large bounding box rectangle. That would have just created some lines that are on top of lines, and it can get a little, a little confusing. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is make the two side pieces. So I'm going to start a polyline, and just like I was saying, I'm going to do lines on top of lines. You're going to see it right here. I'm going to start on this corner, and I'm going to go over three quarter inches. I'm going to go all the way up. So I'm panning and I'm zooming to get nice and accurate. Click, come back here, click, and then pan and zoom. Come back here, and it'll say point. Okay. Notice I didn't click anywhere in the middle. I'm trying to click at only the four points of the rectangle. Okay, so I'm going to copy this over to the other side. Okay, so um, I will do the copy command. And it says select objects to copy is going to be this. Press enter when done, so I'll hit enter. Point to copy from, okay, is going to be this corner right here. Click. Point to copy to is going to be the outside corner right here. Click. And then you can see it's trying to let me co copy more of them. I don't want to copy any more, so I'm just going to hit enter. Okay, so far so good. Okay. You can check to make sure you're doing it right is that these objects are closed curves. When I click on one of them, it's a closed rectangle, closed rectangle, closed rectangle, closed rectangle. If you were to click on this button right here, this, stand, this color wheel stands for object properties. So if I click on it, right now it just, it's telling me nothing. Okay doesn't tell me anything, but when I click on something, it says, oh, this is a closed curve, and its current layer is default, and some other information, okay? So I'm going to go back to my layers. I like to look at my layers, but I'll just show you here. Closed curve, closed curve, closed curve, okay? You do not want to have anything that's an open curve. You wouldn't want to have something that's like this. Okay, now this, this looks like it's a closed curve, right? But when I click on it, you can see that it's made up of two separate curves, and it also tells me it's an open curve. We don't want that, okay? We want to have closed curves. So I'm going to select this with a rectangular selection. I'm just dragging a rectangle around it, and then I'm going to hit the delete key to delete it. Okay, so back to layers. I'm working in my default layer. Now what I'm going to do is make a construction line that is going to represent the height opening of the, sh the where, where the middle shelf is supposed to be. So you remember it was 7 and 3 eighths. So I'm starting from just a random spot on the highest point of the bottom piece, and I'm going to type in... 7.375, which is 7 and 3 eighths, and then hit enter. Okay. All right, now I'm going to just hit enter. I'm done with that. So I need to create my first shelf right over here. Okay, so I'm going to go like this, polyline. I'll start it right there. Okay, now I need to go in for the dado in here. So if I start right here, 1 8, 2 8, 3 8, click. 
Now I'm going to go up 0 0.75. I'm not going to count all the way up to 0 0.75. I'm just going to type in 0 0.75. Hey, click. I'm going to come all the way back here. Okay. So I didn't click yet here. I'm just going to be putting my mouse here. One eighth, two eighths, three eighths. Click. Let's go down 0 0.75. 0 0.75. Okay. And then I'm just going to pan and get right back to the point. Okay. So closed curve, closed curve, closed curve. Closed curve, closed curve. This curve, I would delete. So I'm going to hit the delete key when it's selected and delete it. Okay, let's save this. Okay. Now, you should have in your file a layer called birch plywood. So I'm going to activate that layer by putting a check mark where there is no check mark. So you can see here the default layer is checked. I'm going to put a check mark in the birch plywood layer. What that's going to do is now anything that I make in the birch anything that I make is going to be in the birch plywood layer. Before the default layer was active, everything I made was black. Now everything I make is going to be brown okay so I'll just delete this okay so now what we're going to do is take these closed curves and turn them into solids so I'm going to double click on the front view and I'm going to go to uh, a new command here it's called solid extrude planar curve straight okay so just so you know what does extrude mean okay this is extruded aluminum so um, They have a shape and they press the aluminum through that form and it extrudes it like a pla Play-Doh machine. Okay, so here you can see you can extrude all different types of aluminum and extrusions are done often in a lot of different materials. Okay, but they can uh, they can extrude these complex shapes because aluminum is soft. So we're going to be extruding. Okay. Um, you guys probably remember this from the Play-Doh noodle extruder. Remember this thing? So squeeze this, it extrudes that shape. Okay? So back to this. We're going to go like this. Solid, extrude planar curve, straight. So it says select curves to extrude. Well, actually, I want to extrude all of these curves right here. Okay? Now remember, I deleted this one curve. If I had left it, this 7 3 8 curve, it would give me a little bit of a problem. So I'm just, I've selected all of my curves by doing a rectangular selection in the top view. Now it says press enter when done. So I'm going to hit enter. Now it's asking me, what's the extrusion distance that you want? Okay. You also need to make sure that both sides equals no. If you have this and it says both sides equals yes, you can see in my top view I'm extruding it and it's coming out of both sides. You want to click on it so it's both sides equals no. Okay, so on the handout and if you look at your drawing, the extrusion was 6.5. The depth was six and a half inches. So I'm just going to type in 6.5 and see what happens. All right, perfect. Okay, so now we have a nice extruded solid. By the way, if yours looks like this. That means that you are in wireframe mode. To look at it in a shaded display, you right click on the viewport title, 
So this one is perspective. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go from a wireframe display to a shaded display. I'll do the same thing in the other ones. Wireframe to shaded. And then wireframe to shaded. And right click on top. Wireframe to shaded. So you just right click on the viewport property. Or you could do this arrow and then go to shaded. All right. So now what I would like to do is hide my curve layer, which is in which I can actually rename here from default to curves. So I'm going to click on this layer. So I clicked on the word default and I'm going to type in curves. And then hit enter. I want to hide it. I don't want to see these lines here. So I'm going to click on the light bulb and that's going to hide them. Okay? So if I were to take the shelf and just drag it away, you can see I don't have a dado. Okay, so I'm going to undo that drag so it goes back to where it was supposed to be. So in order to make a dado, I'm going to have to do another operation, which is called a Boolean operation, which means that you're performing a mathematical operation with solids. So since we're working with solids, I'm going to do a solid, and it's called a Boolean difference right here, difference. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. Make sure nothing was selected previously, so it asks you a question first. Okay, so it says, select the surfaces or poly surfaces you would like to subtract from. Well, I want to make a dado in these two pieces. So these two pieces are what I'm subtracting from. I'm subtracting material from them to make the dado. So I'm going to go this one and this one. I'm going to hit enter. Now it says select surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract with, and in parentheses it says delete input equals yes. Okay, you want to click on this and make sure it says delete input equals no. Otherwise, it's going to delete your shelf once it performs the Boolean operation. So delete input equals no. So I'm going to click on the shelf. And now you says, well, nothing happened. Well, because it doesn't know if that's all you want meant to click. Okay. So select surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract with. Okay. Or I did. So now press enter when done. So I'm, I'm done selecting and I'm going to hit enter. Okay. My computer is running really slow for some reason, but it wouldn't take that long. Now, if you looked, it kind of flashed a little bit. And look what happened. We have a dado here. I'm going to click on it and just hold and drag it back and there's my beautiful data okay so I'm going to do an undo all right I'm happy with that I think that's enough for today I'm going to hit save and you should see this file successfully written into your directory okay with your file name all right guys thanks for watching and hope that was helpful and I will see you later